me just ask you a question. Why, why are you guys in, why are you guys bloods? Why are you in the gangs? Yeah. Because I'm down. I'm down for it. Because I'm a true I'm a true I come from the heart. Let me change our shit worse to bees. It ain't no disrespect. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And the Crips change all they uh, bees to C's. Like you feel people say I'm kicking it, we say I'm baking it. They say what's cracking, we say what's breaking. They say, oh, that's cool, we say that's bold. Have you ever wondered about the mysterious codes that govern the world of street gangs? Imagine belonging to a group where one wrong move could cost you your life. It sounds like something straight out of a movie, right? But for members of the notorious blood gang, it's a chilling reality. So a simple cause. What's, so, what, what, what's the simple cause? Of being a blood, going down with the bloods. That's how we feel. We die, it's like we go the one of them. I mean, these gangs aren't just about wearing colors or throwing up signs. From street corners to prison yards, they're bound by strict codes that govern every aspect of their members' lives. From how they talk to who they associate with, it's not for the faint-hearted. Trust me, they're brutal. Breaking these rules isn't just frowned upon, it's a death sentence. Sounds crazy, right? It might seem crazy to some people, but for members, they're serious about business. It's a world where loyalty is everything, and betrayal is met with brutal consequences. I'm sure you are wondering by now what these rules are and why they are so important. Why do people join these gangs knowing the risks involved? What drives them to adhere to such strict codes, even at the cost of their own safety? And most importantly, what happens when members dare to defy the rules? Well, get ready to be shocked, horrified, and ultimately enlightened. So buckle up, folks, and brace yourself for a journey into the heart of darkness, where deadly rules that blood gang members live and die for exist. So word on the street is that the Bloods gang has been around for a long time, even though many people didn't know much about them. They started back in the early 1970s in Los Angeles. Back then, they were trying to stand up to another gang called the Avenue Boys. At first, they were called the Avenue Cribs, but later they changed their name to the Crips. Surprisingly, the Bloods actually came from the Crips. I guess you didn't know that. They were kind of like a little brother gang that broke away. Now here's where it gets interesting. There was a big fight between the Crips and another group called the Pirus. The Pirus wanted to terminate peaceful relations with the Crips and had turned to other gangs like the Brims, Denver Lanes, the Bishops, and Athens Park Boys for backup. Now the Crips had a L.A. Brim member earlier that year, so you can understand why they would be spoiling for a fight too. They had a big meeting and decided to join forces against the Crips. That's how the Bloods started. The Bloods weren't just a small group. They grew pretty fast and became a big deal in Los Angeles. Other gangs who were tired of being pushed around by the Crips joined them. They wanted to stand up for themselves and protect their neighborhoods. Well, just like some people thought, the Bloods weren't just a random group of troublemakers. They were a group of people who wanted to make their communities safer and stronger. They called themselves the United Blood Nation, and they fought hard to protect each other and their neighborhoods. Now the Bloods are a gang that believes in sticking together and fighting for what they believe in, no matter what. They see each member as equal, like soldiers in an army, all working together to stay on top. They're always ready to fight to keep their status above their enemies. The gang's way of organizing itself fits with their beliefs, even though who's in charge can change a lot. I mean, their structure has different levels. It's kind of like a pyramid. At the top is the superior, the leader of a smaller group within the gang. Then there's the gangsta blood, who's sent to do violent stuff by a superior. And then there are young bloods, the new babies. The bloods are all about loyalty and strength. Like this, folks are always adapting to stay ahead and making sure they're ready for whatever comes their way. The Bloods, as a gang, have special signs they use. Yeah, they've got these cool signs, like a star with five points, a crown with five points, and even a bulldog. But here's the thing. These symbols aren't just for looks, they're like secret codes for the gang. 
it kind of helps them to recognize each other. See, back in the day, there were five main blood groups, kind of like teams. They called themselves Five Alive. Catchy, right? To become a blood, you gotta follow their rules. They only let new members join on the 31st day of any month except May. Why skip May? Well, it's like a test. If someone says they're a blood but they joined in May, they're probably faking it. Being a blood isn't just about wearing colors or throwing signs. It's a big deal, and they take it seriously. Once you're in, you gotta swear an oath holding a red flag. It's serious stuff. It goes like this. I promise to be loyal to our flag and to the united bloods of our group. I'll stick by our rules, and each of us will support the others. It's like being part of a club, but way more intense. But wait, it gets juicier. Now, let's talk about the rules. Every group has rules to keep things running smoothly, and the Bloods are no exception. But their rules are pretty straightforward. Taking a closer look, the claim is that the Bloods live by 31 rules, guiding their actions. But we will talk about a few. First off, and one of the most important Bloods rules is this. No fighting in front of outsiders. It's their fifth commandment. They keep their business hush-hush. Forget this rule. Well, you might end up in a heap of trouble. If two bloods start bickering in public, their own gang will jump in to stop it. They're supposed to sort out their issues behind closed doors. It's like a family thing. You don't air your dirty laundry for everyone to see. Another of their big rulies is that you gotta get branded with tattoos. Picture three dots in a triangle. They call it the dog's pal. Those dots stand for blood in their secret code. It's like their ID card. But that's not all. Depending on where you are, the tattoos might change. Like a five-pointed star, for example. Remember Aaron Hernandez, the football player? He had one of these tattoos during his 2015 M trial. It's a sign you're one of them. Some get tattoos of weapons, pit bulls, or even blood drops. Each tattoo tells a story about where you're from and what you're about. Then there's the fasting rule. Ever wondered why October 31st holds a special place for the Bloods gang? Well, let me break it down for you in a bit. Back in October 1993, the big bosses of the Bloods gang came together in jail to stand up against rival gangs. They made a list of 31 important rules for their crew to follow. Each number had a meaning. Zero for blood, one for unity, and three for the rules. So, October 31st became their official birthday. But hold your hats. Before you start thinking about spooky stuff, let me tell you the real deal. Rumors have long circulated about Bloods' gang activities on or around this auspicious date, perhaps amplified by Halloween. In 2008, Fears of impending gang attacks on October 31st were elevated after a shooting in Newark, New Jersey, with two Kings, as well as another one in the state of Virginia, but supposedly, those are just stories. Ain't no truth to them. According to the cops and fact-checkers, it's all baloney. So if bloods aren't rampaging and slashing their way through the streets, as the rumors say, what are they actually doing on October 31? Well, they keep it cool. Yep, that's right. They show respect by fasting on this day. No mischief, no mayhem. Just chilling out. So guys, the next rule on the list is the appearance rule. Yep, you heard right. Keeping up appearances isn't just for fancy folks in suits. It's a big deal for them too. The Bloods, especially on the East Coast, want to show outsiders they mean business. They dress sharp and act professional, almost like CEOs. In 2018, two Bloods members faced charges in court, but instead of looking like typical criminals, they dress like businessmen. Even the prosecutors noticed, comparing them to top bosses. But for them, it's not just about looking good, it's about staying smart too. Bloods know that keeping calm and using your brain is super important. They even wrote it down in their rules. And it's not just for the big shots either. Even regular members are told to keep their appearance neat and more importantly, never start a conflict unless it's important because everything you do reflects on each and every blood. 
one of the most important rules for the Bloods is respect and take care of your fellow Bloods. Think of it like being in a family where fighting amongst each other happens but isn't encouraged. Instead, Bloods are supposed to have each other's backs. For Bloods, it's important to never mistake another Blood's kindness for weakness. They should always be willing to share food and drinks with their fellow gang members. This rule is serious business. In jail, these rules become even more crucial. New Blood inmates are provided with everything they need, like clean clothes, soap, and even money. It's like a support system inside prison walls. Being in a Blood gang also means having protection. If a fellow gang member gets into trouble, other Bloods will have their back, no questions asked. It's like a safety net. Then there's the blood in, blood out, membership is for life rule. You know joining the Bloods gang might seem like a shield in a storm, especially for folks in jail for the first time. But remember, once you're in, it's like a tattoo you can't scrub off. Leaving, it's tougher than ditching a subscription. Your gang ties stick to you like glue, even outside bars. A guy named Red spilled the beans to a source. He said leaving the gang is smoother for big shots. They still pull strings from behind the scenes. Even if they say bye, they're still part of the club. Red says, you still blood at the end of the day. It's like family, they say. Some try the military route, thinking it's a fresh start. But it's like jumping from one fire into another. The FBI says some bloods still hold on tight even in uniform. Take Latif Johnson, for example. He got busted for gang stuff while serving. His military past got him a lighter sentence, but he still couldn't shake off the bloods. The stains stuck. Now, despite all of these other rules, the bloods gang runs on one golden rule. What happens in the bloods stays in the bloods. They don't mess around with snitches. Think of it like this. If you're part of the bloods, you don't go blabbing to anyone outside the gang about what's going on inside. It's like a secret club with serious consequences for breaking the code. Imagine this. You're in a club and you see someone telling secrets to the bouncer. Not cool, right? That's how the Bloods feel about snitches. They're bad for business. The gang's rule book, known as the UBN, is crystal clear. No snitches allowed. Even though sometimes secrets slip out, Blood members are expected to keep their mouths shut about gang stuff unless the top dogs say otherwise. A report from the cops mentioned how one big shot Bloods member ordered a hit on a snitch who spilled the beans. He even wanted them taken out while they were in the hospital. That's how serious they are about keeping things quiet. Snitching is a big no-no, and the only way it happens is if someone gets a sweet deal from the cops. But trust me, Breaking this rule isn't worth the trouble. Now let's talk about the price of admission rule. Joining the Bloods gang isn't like joining a club or a team. It's way more intense. See, they've got this rule and it's a big one. It's like their initiation ceremony, but it's not all candles and secret handshakes. Nope, it's a beating. Yep, you heard that right. If you want to be a Blood, you got to take a beating from the other Bloods. It's like a test to see if you're tough enough to roll with them. And it's not just any beating, it's a timed one. On the East Coast, it's 31 seconds. And on the West Coast, it's 21 seconds. They call it shooting the 31 or jumping in. Basically, you gotta fight all the bloods for that long without giving up. But hey, if getting punched for half a minute doesn't sound like your thing, there's another option. You can do something they call putting in work. That means going out and doing something for the gang, like a robbery. Bring back something valuable and boom, you're in. So yeah, joining the Bloods isn't for the faint of heart. It's a whole different world out there. One big rule for the Bloods is waving their flag high. Imagine the Bloods like a club where everyone wears red. Yep, red is their thing. They might wear other colors too, depending on where they are, but you'll never catch them in blue. Blue is for their rivals, the Crips. Every Blood member gets a red flag. They can tie it around their head or wear it however they like. But here's the deal. They always keep it visible, even if it means they could get into trouble. And dropping the flag? That's a big no-no. It's like saying, I don't care about my gang. 
One blood member who didn't give their name explained it simply. You never hide your flag, even if you might get beat up for it. That's just how it is. So, for the Bloods, flying their flag isn't just about showing off. It's a way of saying, I'm with my gang no matter what. Breaking these rules isn't just a slap on the wrist. It can mean life or death. If a Blood messes up, they could face serious consequences, even getting unalived by their own people. So for the Bloods, following these rules isn't just about staying out of trouble, it's about staying alive. Speaking of rivals, the Bloods have a lot of them. One of the big ones is the Crips. The Bloods and the Crips have been at each other's throats since way back in the 1970s. It's like they're sworn enemies or something. The Bloods were actually formed just to stand up to the Crips. And get this, their grudge has lasted longer than some countries have even been around. If you're a Blood, you've got to follow one simple rule. Hate the Crips. That means no wearing blue, which is like the Crips' favorite color, and try your best to avoid words with the letter C. They even write it upside down or cross it out in graffiti to show disrespect. The Crips aren't too fond of the Bloods, either. They call them crabs and know better than to wander into Blood territory. One Blood member said, Don't mess with us, and we won't mess with you. But if you do, watch out! But surprise. Surprise. Sometimes even these tough guys call a timeout. They've had a couple of ceasefires over the years. Like in 1992, after a gang member got unalived by the police. And again in 2019, after Nipsey Hussle got unalived. So, I guess even gangsters know when to put down their fists, at least for a little while. Let's take a sneak peek into the Crips rulebook, though. The Crips also have their own secret language. It's like a code that only members understand. Back in the day, wearing blue meant you were part of the Crips gang, but now they've changed the rules to stay safe from cops. Red and yellow are big no-nos. They're for other gangs. Instead, they wear blue for being soldiers, black for tough guys, purple for war, and green for cash. And it's not just colors. They have special words and numbers, too. It's like a whole other world. Even hand signs have meanings. It's all about staying connected and keeping secrets in plain sight. Did you know Crips have their own secret alphabet? Yep, they use funky symbols instead of letters to keep messages hush-hush. The New York City police found out these Crips are serious about keeping their talk on the down low. They've got a special alphabet and even numbers that stand for words about their gang life. Why? Well, it's all about staying safe. They use these codes in graffiti and tattoos to tell who's who and where they belong. And get this, every Crip has to learn and repeat certain phrases word for word, like a gangster chant. So, shh, the Crips have secrets. Rumor has it that when a fellow Crips member passes away, it's a big deal for the gang. They all come together to honor their fallen friend. Back in 1992, when Cadillac Jim died, there were so many Crips at his funeral that the police had to keep a close watch. Gregory, who used to be in the gang, said going to funerals was important because it showed respect for what they believed in. Even when the founder of the Crips, Stanley Tookie Williams, died in 2005, thousands came to his funeral to pay their respects. Sometimes, even rival gangs agree to stop fighting for a bit to attend a funeral. It's a time for peace and respect. In the end, the rules of gangs can seem crazy, but they're no joke. Not following them can lead to serious consequences, even death. Gang members often face tough choices between loyalty to their group and their own safety. These rules might seem strange to outsiders, but they're a big deal to those involved. It's a reminder that the world of gangs is dangerous and unpredictable. So, whether you're part of a gang or not, it's important to think carefully about the choices you make and the risks you take. It's a matter of life and death.